Thank you. How about this tennis facility that you're in tonight? How about it? Yes. I can't, I can't begin to tell you how excited I am about this project. Um, I'm in my 10th year as director of athletics. And one of my missions when I took this job was to provide resources and opportunities for our student athletes and coaches to excel at a very high level. We have done that across this village, across athletics, many locker rooms, the Long Family Operations Center, you name it, we've touched almost everything we can. This building is long overdue, but we're finally in it. I'll tell you a quick story on how we got here. A few years back, we had an opportunity to consider adding a 200 meter indoor track at our indoor facility on the other side of the rice. If you remember, we had four tennis courts in there. In order to build a 200 meter indoor track, bank track, we had to have the perfect building. Ironically, that footprint of that building was perfect to do a 200 meter indoor track, which would have been only the third one in the Southeastern Conference with Texas A&M and Arkansas. So it provided a great opportunity for our track programs to have a 200 meter track. What's the downside? Four tennis courts had to be eliminated, but not to worry. I told the coaches, I got you covered. We're gonna build you a new place. It'd only take us a couple years, maybe. It took a little longer, so my deepest apology to you. I think Coach Shepley says it's seven. It's really five. I did the math on that today. <laughs> I know. You guys reminded me quite often. But you know what? I'll tell you. The, the student athletes, both the men and the women, and these coaches, they might have asked a few questions here and there, but they kept doing their job. And they kept winning. We didn't fall off. And that's a testament to our student athletes and our coaches that despite not having a place to go during inclement weather, they were able to still be very productive. Please join me in giving them a round of applause. As you know, we have two great programs and now with this facility, we can do a lot of things that maybe we've never been able to do before. Are the expectations to win at a higher level? Most athletic directors would tell you, absolutely. I'm not just another athletic director. Winning is hard, but it does eliminate that opportunity that we didn't have before. So we're grateful, we're grateful for that. I wanna recognize a couple of people that are here tonight. I'm grateful for all of you for coming tonight, all the people that played a financial role in getting this building, your, your blood, sweat, and tears that have gone into this facility. And I wanna recognize, first of all, I wanna recognize Jason Kasky, who's the president and CEO of the USC Foundation. Where's Jason? I saw him earlier. There's Jason right there. While, while the coaches thought this might be a little bit slow, without our foundation and Jason Kasky and Hunter Lambert, who's vice president of the development part of the foundation, we were able to move a little bit faster than we would have otherwise. So guys, we're very grateful for your impact and we have some board members here from the foundation Thank you for being a vehicle to help us get here tonight. We're very grateful. I want to recognize Harris Cohn. Where is Harris? Harris, come out here. I want everybody to see you. <laughs> so Harris is right over here. He is the CEO of Cohn Construction. And Harris and I didn't really know each other until this project started. I think maybe... Jeff Crane gave us an introduction while he was still here and one thing led to another and we were able to engage with, with Harris who is uh, an advocate of tennis, loves the game. One conversation led to another. He was very interested and passionate about being a part of this project and the work that he has done has been spectacular. I can't say enough personally and for all of us how grateful we are for the effort that you put into making this a reality today. We're very grateful. Thank you, Harris. And I think, I think you have many of your staff members tonight. A lot of your staff are here with you. You guys, please raise your hand as being part of the staff. Thank you. A plus beautiful facility. 
I, I, I will be honest, I did call Harris on numerous occasions. He's a pretty busy guy. But sometimes when I'd be in my car, I would ring him up. And um, yeah, I would ask about tennis, but I would always t put a few digs in there. We had a great time. Uh, he never has bought my lunch. I keep waiting for him to buy my lunch. But, but we've, we've developed a really good relationship and so appreciative that we ended up in the place we are today. I also want to go back many, many years ago um, before Coach Appley and Coach Goffey, go back to the days of Kent DeMars and Arlo Elkins, who were tennis coaches. Coach Elkins had the women, Coach DeMars had the men, and Coach DeMars is here tonight. And I was a, I was a young buck. I was a new kid in town. And we were in the roundhouse. Some of you probably remember the roundhouse. And we were all over in the rain ha roundhouse as you, have a, you had to have an umbrella in your office if it rained during the day. That's the kind of shape that building was in. But Arlo and Kent embraced me when I got here and, and gave me an opportunity to learn the ropes a little bit. There were many times that we would go down Rosewood Drive at lunchtime and have lunch at the Keganels. Who remembers the Keganels in here? I like it. You guys remember the Keganels? The food was pretty good, but I went because of those two gentlemen where I could get the wisdom and knowledge of two men who'd been very successful and knew how to navigate the waters. So I'm very grateful for that. I'd like to uh, take a moment to recognize the Elkins family who's with us tonight. Please raise your, raise your hand. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. And Coach DeMars, where did you, where did you get to? There he is, Coach DeMars, thank you, sir. I'd like to recognize a couple of our staff members in the athletic department. Judy Van Horn, who's a deputy AD, and she also handles all internal operations and risk management. She's also the sports supervisor for men's and women's tennis. Among a lot of other things, she has her plate full, but she was day-to-day -day intimately involved in this project. I would say that from the outset, probably Judy and I were the two that we were gonna see this building finished come hell or high water. And there were many days I thought it might cost me my job. But I was gonna go first, Judy. I was gonna go out the door first. But thank you for your dedication in seeing, seeing this through. Also, yes, give Judy a round of applause. And Chris Rogers, is Chris here? Chris is back there. He's the executive associate AD for administration. He played a major role in T's and I's, he's, he's very detailed and makes sure that things get done. So Chris, thank you for all you did. And also Jeff Davis, who's a senior associate AD for operations and facilities. I saw Jeff, where's Jeff? Thank you for what you did. And, and we just gave you another assignment for your job. So you'll always be necessary, so we're grateful. Thank you, for, thank you, all three of y'all, for what y'all have done to make this happen. I'm very, very grateful. I take a lot of credit, but I know who did all the work, so thank you. Also, Dr. Pestides is not here in our board of trustees that we had to begin the process with, but they were also um, cooperative in, in allowing us to make this facility possible. And there's so many people that have been involved, but it, it was something that we really, really needed. And I, I do regret that it took us five years to get here, but we're here, you know, so we move forward. And, and as I said, these coaches and those student athletes, they never missed a beat, you know, and it was, a, it was a beautiful thing to see. They didn't make excuses. We beat teams that had better facilities and, uh, you know, and they didn't, they didn't allow that to be adversity. And that speaks volumes about what they stand for. And now I get a chance, so we're gonna hear from both coaches, but I get a chance to introduce First off, Coach Josh Goffey, uh, you can start making your way up here because your introduction is going to be short because I know your speech will be long. Coach Goffey is entering his 12th season as the head coach of our men's tennis program. That's the third longest tenure of any men's tennis coach at Carolina. He has 168 wins, which is third in the school record books. Last year, he had our men's program in the, in the Sweet 16. If you remember back in 2019, one of his guys, Paul Jubb, won the NCAA Singles Championship, the first in school history. So, Coach Josh Goffey, and I'll share one more thing with you about him. We almost had two national champion, championships, singles, back to back.
because we're not, we didn't get to play during COVID. And I actually went, Judy went, Harris, Harris, you went with us. We went down to Orlando and had an opportunity to win and I was getting ready to strangle an official. I think Harris, you were going with me. We were, we were, we were like, what? He called a delay of game on Rodriguez and gave a point. And Coach Goffey kept us cool. And Harris and I were like, we're out of our seats. Like, well, we're not going. This is not going to happen. It was a critical point. The most, yeah. Yeah. So I, I feel like maybe that second national championship was right there. But it's my, my pleasure, my honor to introduce a great tennis coach and a great man. We're proud to have him in our program, Coach Josh Goffey. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, it's great being here with everybody tonight, opening up this beautiful facility. Um, Ray, it, like I said, man, it's been, it feels like it's been 10 years. Um, and when I say that, to give you guys a little context, um, it's, it's uh, without having an indoor facility in January and February, it's a real grind for, for all the student athletes. Coaches, it's our job, but for the student athletes, it's tough. So last year we had, um, we had six home matches. We only had six home matches last year. And the reason is, is January and February are indoor seasons. And unfortunately, um, when you get to a semi top tier of top 15 level as Kevin's program and our program is currently sitting, you, uh, you need to play good teams. And you need to play good teams early on to get ready for the SEC conference. And it's unfortunate, we can't schedule anybody. The UNCs are not coming down here during that part of the year. The uh, Ohio States, the Michigans, they're not coming down. But um, that's what this facility is gonna provide for us. We're gonna, we're gonna be able to get in there with the big dogs right off the bat. And that's gonna allow us and afford the opportunities to our student athletes to be able to get out there, reap the benefits of all the work they're doing because we are handicapped starting our season roughly in the SEC part in March. We have to get good wins there. We have to get quality wins. And right now we can shoot from the hip from the early parts of the year and these guys deserve it for sure. So I um, wanna share a quick story that a little off the cuff here, but I just looked at the court service and it reminded me when we got in here with some student athletes on Wednesday. And uh, it's one of those moments that you get it and you're afforded as a coach, you know, behind the scenes. And so, like on cue, I'm always about one or two minutes late and I, I don't take pride in it, but I was one or two minutes late. But what that did is it afforded me the, uh, the view of, of catching all of our student athletes outside this facility. And if you can imagine basically 20 kids from 18 to 22, these kids were sitting outside and it was almost like they were waiting to go on a ride at Disney World, like legitimately. So like, you know, imagine a seven year old with a, with a smile from here to here, just pure joy, like literally not taking selfie smiles, real smiles. And we walked up and everybody didn't really know what to do with themselves. It was, it was unbelievable, right? Not the coolest part of the story. We come in and this is where it gets good. So everybody starts looking up and they go, oh my gosh. And take a look, I mean, take a look, gander up right now. This, this ceiling is 50 feet tall, right? That's premier, that's, that does not happen anywhere. This is like, that's, there's no obstructions up there. You start feeling the environment in here and that's what our guys started doing. The girls team walked right over here and the guys team walked right over there. And then the first thing they did was they went like this. They started feeling that surface and they're like, okay, it's gonna be slow. It's gonna be slow because these are gritty. And what we correlate that with is fitness, and that's what we pride ourselves on, but our guys are like, okay, we can do this, but that's gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt. And then they kind of started meandering out to the baseline, and then you started seeing these guys, they're, they're, their eyes started kind of glazing over, and when they do that, they're inside their head, they're visualizing. And so what I started seeing is these guys are visualizing their future. Like they started visualizing themselves taking down whoever it was. And I know where we are right now and the conversation going on in our locker room is that we are not here to take down number 382 in the country right now. And that's what, our, that's what this place is gonna do. It's gonna give those guys the opportunities to realize that vision and that dream that they experienced on Wednesday. And so for me as a coach, that makes me, it makes my heart full, you know, because that's why we do this. It's for those guys to come in here and ultimately rip that shirt off, look at the crowd, beat their chest, rep Carolina, walk to the net, shake that guy's hand and say, I am better than you. And that's, that's how we roll. So, um, so, Ray, 
man, I know that you said, and, and he, was, he was being very humble there, but, you know, it's, an athletic director never wants to give the news of, hey, we're going to have to take your facility away, even if it's only for a year, we'll get that back in a year and so on, but like anything, life happens, life happens, so change of football coaches, COVID happened and so on, I think Kevin and I were pretty understanding, but at the same time, you know, he said, he goes, if it's the last thing I do, I'm getting you a tennis facility, and that means a lot to us, so Thanks, Ray. That's uh, a man of his word over there. So can we give him a round of applause, please? And also, I know, Judy, you've been thanked, but Judy, Judy goes above and beyond for our programs, not just for this facility, but above and beyond for our programs. I think we've been together for 10 years as, uh, as my boss and, and her employee. Um, but she goes to bat, so anything we need, we can confide in her just straight up. We have really candid talks, and it's a relationship that we both cherish. And uh, without her running point in this facility, this wouldn't happen either. So another round of applause for Judy, please. And Harris and staff, it's gorgeous. You guys hit a home run. And Harris, yeah, man, four all deuce right there. That was, uh, I wanted to bring that Natty title home for you, but thanks for coming. That was pretty cool having you down on the floor. We'll put ourselves in that position again as well. So, um, and to all those that, that gave to this facility and, and made this possible, you know, in, in giving the opportunity to our student athletes to realize their dreams. Thank you very much. And everybody, and you guys need a round of applause too. So everybody that's in here, the tennis community, please give them a round of applause. And finally, there's a, uh, there's a small group of guys here that are some former players of mine. And uh, i trying not to get emotional here talking about you boys. But this is my first class. It's my first class that came in the door and, and um, you know, they had, a, they had a tough task. It was, it was to bring in uh, a new era and, and really to start taking down some names and, and breaking down some barriers in the SEC. It's a tough conference. It's a tough conference, and until that point, we only had five wins as, as our record. And our goal is not just to, to beat five wins. We want to go and win the whole thing. And that's the commitment that we're making to you every day. That's what we do to, uh, you know, we have some student athletes here, two of them right here. Raise your hands if you don't mind. These two boys. These guys work their tails off along with everybody else to go and win championships. And that's where the, the sights have been set. But it started with that group in the back. So we've, we've kind of identified each group and given them an identity because it matters. Those guys matter in the back, you know. They, they had some big time seasons, top 15 program, the whole deal. But, you know, as time goes on, some players tend to feel like they got, they've forgotten. Well. Not these guys. These guys were the trailblazers, the, the barrier knockdowners, whatever you want to call them, but these guys back here are the ones that made today's wins possible. So, um, and not to mention they're young. And for them to be able to go in their pockets at an age where they're starting families and being able to start their careers and so on, it's, it's, that's a big ask for them. But it wasn't even an ask. These guys came voluntarily up to the, up to the time and said, Coach, we're doing this. We're gonna get a pool of guys together and we wanna do this together because it means a lot because every win that we have now, these guys actually celebrate like it's their win. They're connected to the program. So with that, I wanna introduce one of my friends that was a player during that time, former SAC president, all SEC, all stud, Tiago Pinheiro. Come on up, buddy. Um, yeah, my name is Chago Pinheiro, super honor to, uh, for, for those words from, from Coach Gaffey. Um, uh, just a quick introduction, I played here from 2012 to 2015, uh, originally from Brazil, uh, so uh, uh, if I mess something up with my language or anything like that, that's the, that's the uh, excuse that I got. So um, I also want to mention to Coach Tanner as well as to Harris that uh, my teammate Kyle and I were also in Orlando that day, and I'm still ticked off about that call, so... Uh, <laughs> You heard me, yeah. So we, we made the trip overnight, and uh, we were there, and we were we were there for the first one when we won, and we were also there when uh, we fell just short. But uh, uh, it's it that that call still haunts me a little bit. But I know we're gonna be back there, if not this year, certainly uh, for years to come. But um, I was told to come here just for a couple of minutes. I'm not gonna take uh, more than a couple of minutes. I know that I'm known to give a couple of speeches as well, uh, long speeches as well. It must be a Brazilian thing. I know. 
th those who don't know, Josh is also from Brazil. Uh, but uh, I was told to just give a little bit of a perspective of what this place means uh, from a student athlete side of things. Um, when I came here, we had the old facility. Uh, so I guess looking back, I was lucky to at least have a, a tennis facility. And I didn't realize back then um, that uh, not having one, uh, the, the grind that it is, and how difficult that must have been. I was not a, a student athlete uh, like, like those guys that, that do not have one, but just looking at this place right now um, and seeing all of this come to fruition and having been a small part of it from a financial commitment standpoint along with my teammates, uh, it's a dream come true. Josh said that uh, his players, uh, the current players, felt like they were going into a Disney World ride. I feel like I'm going into a Disney World ride. So uh, this is, I can't take a, the smile out of my face. This is an absolute state-of-the-art facility. I've had the opportunity to play in other uh, indoor facilities across the SEC and across just college athletics in general. And this place is as good as any that I have seen. Uh, so uh, I'm so excited for the current players. I'm so excited for generations to come. I'm so excited for the men's and women's programs, the girls as well. And uh, I want to thank Coach Tanner. I want to thank Steve Eigenbrod and the Garnet Society and the Gamecock Club and South Carolina Athletics in general or as a whole for putting this together, for coming through with it. It may have taken a little bit longer than uh, um, originally uh, maybe it was supposed to happen, but we are here and we, we go forward. So I can't wait. Uh, I can't play anymore uh, figuratively and quite literally. I'm, I'm, I can barely hold a racket these days. It would be embarrassing for me to even be on those courts, but I cannot wait to be on those stands, perhaps doing a little bit to take uh, or, or to give us a little bit of an edge and still feel a part of it. Uh, so I also want to take this time to thank my fellow teammates. Uh, one of them is actually the assistant coach here, Coach Adams. I don't think I'll ever call him Coach Adams. He's always going to be Drew to me, but uh, Coach Adams is a massive part of this program today and has been for the last two and a half to three years. Uh, but he's also a part of this. He was also part of that first class uh, and part of the, the group of teammates that, uh, that rallied together uh, as part of that 2015 class. Uh, and uh, I was able to, again, make a, make a small contribution. So um, excited, cannot wait to be here during matches, excited to talk with the current players and with the coaches about what this place is going to become uh, for years to come and the identity that we're going to get to build um, uh, as a program when opponents come. So uh, uh, thank you. Thank you for all the, the, those who put in the time. Thank you for all of those who put in the effort and also the ones who were able to contribute financially to make this place a reality. Uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Don't want to take too much time. And uh, go Gamecocks. Um, so my name is Steve Eigenbrot. I'm over the Gamecock Club. Uh, I'll tell you this real quick. That, folks, that is kind of like a dream. You had the uh, very appreciative athletic director of all the uh, folks that helped make this happen, over the top appreciative head coach, followed by the student athlete turned donor, which is a thing that doesn't happen a ton in our industry um, for whatever reason. But Tiago, hats off to you. Thank you so much. A round of applause for Tiago and his teammates. We're here tonight in this beautiful facility in large part because of the folks that are here tonight. Uh, we raised over half a million dollars to put the, as Judy called it, the jewelry uh, in this facility to make it right. Uh, and there's been a lot of people that have stepped forward to make tonight possible that we are eternally grateful for. Um, and accordingly, uh, we had a chance to thank some of them individually. We had some ribbon cuttings earlier today, but I just wanted to take the moment to acknowledge them individually. Um, so, so wait till the end here for a round of applause, but I'd like to thank the Beasley family, the Waters family, uh, Patty Shelley, and Cindy Bradshaw, all of whom gave naming gifts for courts in this facility. How about a round of applause for them? <laughs> Additionally, I want to give a very special thanks to both the Binion and Hardaway families, who both supported this project and gave uh, name spaces after two of our legendary coaches, Coach Demars and Coach Elkins. So we have the Arlo Elkins lobby, and we also have the totality, the, the playing surface here is named after Coach Demars. So round of applause for them as well. And uh, lastly, as it relates to donors, this place is a little bit like a country club. I don't know if y'all got that vibe. It's really nice. 
but we also have some members. So sprinkled amongst you, we have some founding members that are gonna have access to this facility, and we're very, very thankful for them as well. Another round of applause if you would. I said I'd be quick, and I, I spoke a moment ago of legendary coaches. Y'all remember that? Um, I have the pleasure of introducing one of our coaches next, and he's a good friend of mine, and I'm not quite ready to call him legendary, but he's brought his program to the top of women's college tennis, and I don't wanna make his head any larger than it already is, but let's just say he's done a pretty good job with what he's got, and now he's got a beautiful indoor facility, so we'll see where he takes it next. Uh, with that being said, please welcome our women's head coach, Kevin Epley. So I'm not from Brazil. Um, so I will be a little bit briefer, and that will make Kendall, who's one of my players, happy, because so often we go to practice, and I'll say, let's go meet for a few minutes, and then two hours later, we're still talking, and uh, girls are rolling their eyes and so on. So uh, I will be a little bit brief. A lot of people have been uh, thanked uh, tonight. I would like to extend my thanks to them as well. Um, I, it, it does, I walked in here, so we came in the other day, and uh, the girls were just, and like Josh said, they were beside themselves. They were envisioning everything. I mean, you can see the people in the stands cheering. They're hoping, which, which court am I going to be on in the deciding match and so on. And uh, it's just going to be an electric in here. And it's going to define their experience uh, as Gamecock athletes for many, many years to come. But coming in today, I got to see the Arlo Elkins lobby and in the Kent DeMars courts here. And we talk a lot with our teams about <laughs> standing on the shoulders of giants and respecting what was built before you got here. And, you know, at that time, you know, when those coaches were here, you know, there wasn't a lot of money in athletics, and these people were in the game because they loved the game. And, uh, and th they had to do other things as well to even survive, but they were, they were true coaches. And uh, they, had, they built legendary programs and were just really happy to uh, build on the foundation that they have built. And I'm glad that we have something permanent with their names on it. So I would like to give one more round of applause for them, if we could. So here we are. This is the premier facility in the state. And you would never have known that a couple years ago that was going to be happening. Certainly the coaches and I didn't, I mean, Josh and I had no idea that, that we would be, we had, it seems like a decade ago, as he said, but when we first found out we were losing our facility and he, he patted us on the back, Coach Tanner, and he said, uh, I promise you we'll, we'll, we'll get you one. And I've worked in athletics for over 25 years and generally speaking, and no offense, it's just athletic programs in general, when promises are made in athletics, it's kind of like, okay, all right, I got you. We, we, yeah, we got a facility coming. So Josh and I are kind of scratching our heads, and we're kind of thinking, okay, well, if it doesn't come, at least we have an excuse for not achieving for the next 10 years. <laughs> you know, recruiting, hey, we don't have a facility. We lost our mat, we don't have a facility. But uh, luckily, we kept, we kept the program running, and uh, we both had some success. Like we said, we almost had back-to-back -back NCAA champions. We have a, a SEC championship team in 2019, first in history. Um, and this is just coming at the right time to build on the momentum that we have going right now. And, uh, and it's it just an incredible thing that it's here. I mean, some of the discussions we had had in the past you know, there's a warehouse down in West Columbia. It's got a forklift, but if you duck your head, you might be able to hit some cross courts for a little while. It's like one of those things. And uh, we, have, we have all these sort of um, potential alternatives. Out in Casey, uh, we had something. We were even talking about a bubble. I mean, there was all sorts of things going on, but it got to the point where Josh and I were kind of like, anything you can put together, please, please do it. Um, so... There was a steady presence with Ray and Judy, our administration. 
this kind of like plugging away. We would meet with them. They'd say, we're going to keep on doing this. We're going to keep on pushing forward. We promised you. And we just, we just w weren't sure that it would ever happen. So we just had to kind of keep running the teams. And, and one day, uh, Ray mentioned Harris and said, look, we've got this idea. It's working. I think we're moving in the right direction. And, uh, and it, it's just hard to believe that we're, we're standing here in this facility right now because it's incredible. A few years ago when I was at Clemson, and they were, you know, they had the peacock feathers. They were all proud of their facility. The director of ops there, I walked in there, and he said, look at this place. It's, it's amazing. And I was like, yeah, it's amazing. But you got to wake up every morning and walk into a place full of orange and purple. You know, like, I mean, you can't beat that. So, um, but here we are, the, the best facility in the state. And arguably, at this point, I was talking to Josh about it earlier, the, uh, the best facility in the conference. So we have no more excuses. We got to keep on, we got to keep on pushing. We got to keep on filling this facility with wins and the experience for our kids. Um, I mean, like I said, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of uh, memories to be made here. And just as a side, when, they, when, when Ray told me they were actually going to break ground here, he said, yeah, it'll be next week. And th this was after COVID. So I, I was looking at our budget shortfalls and we're hearing all this stuff about all the money that we were, were going to lose. I was like, for sure, they're, they're, <laughs> they're not going to do the facility. There's not a chance. And um, oh, we're just going to keep on, uh, you know, we're going to keep on plugging away. We met with Harris and his team, which were unbelievable. And, you know, we went in there. I was like, you know, they're, they're talking about colors and, and how we're going to, uh, you know, do the, the locker rooms and so on. I'm just thinking... I mean, I guess, I guess this is actually happening at this point. And so when we broke ground, I was driving by. I would take the long way home every day just to see, you know, how, how far along we had come. And, you know, the first day they're clearing shrubbery, and then the next day it's a tractor. You know, and as you see more track, and, and eventually I was thinking we were going to have a sign just lifted that just said, you know, the satellite chain beamer satellite op center or something, you know, it's like, ah, the gig is up. It was fun while it lasted, but, but no, we had tennis court people here and so on. So, um, so I, I am, I am truly humbled today that, that, that this actually happened because it's an expression of this community and the support that this community has, uh, the, the, the perseverance of RAD, who is truly an amazing person and a man of his word. My, uh, uh, my sports administrator Judy, who's pushed pushed hard for this all along, and they're doing it. Behind, they're doing it. They, they don't need our constant. They're just they're, they, they made it a commitment, and they kept on pushing. Development. Steve Eigen brought all of the people in this community have just been incredible, and uh, and, it, and it's it's. I'm standing here, and, it, and this is for us. And uh, I, I just I, I thank you all from the bottom of my heart, truly. So we, we, we look forward to filling this place with great memories, great championships into the future. So tonight I have one of my players. Her name is Kendall Couch, and she will be a voice of the team. And she is an extraordinary young lady in the honors program here. A lot of our girls are over uh, competing in Raleigh right now. And uh, she'd like to say a, a few words, so let's give her a hand. Today is a special day for my teammates and I. We are so lucky to have people like you who believe in us and are willing to invest in our success. We have been eagerly counting down the days until this opening since we have arrived on campus as it will allow us to compete on equal footing with the best tennis programs in the nation, but also because it means we will never have to wake up at 5 a.m. and drive 30 minutes away to share two practice courts with the men's team for an hour. As fun as it was driving in the dark in the pouring rain to Wildwood, I think we will enjoy the walk across the street much more. Gratitude is an important concept that we talk about constantly as a team and something we consider to be one of our core values. Gratitude for the opportunity to play the sport that we love while receiving a great education. Gratitude for Coach Tanner and all the administrators who had the vision to help make this possible. And most importantly, Gratitude for people like you. I have grown up in college athletics, seen the way a lot of different athletic departments are run, and because of that, I've also 
been able to see just what makes this athletic department so special. First and foremost, the Gamecock community is more passionate and supportive than any other fan base I've been around, and everyone here is a testament to that. There are not many other athletic departments in the country that would work tirelessly to complete a project as big as this in a COVID era for a sport that doesn't produce any revenue in return. The second thing I've learned from being in college athletics for so long is how important it is to the success of an athletic department to have donors that are willing to invest in its programs. Without the people in this room, today would not be possible. This facility will no doubt give my teammates and I opportunities to reach new heights for our program, but its impact will also stretch far beyond my team, allowing us to compete on the recruiting trail with any school in the country, as well as having a huge impact on tennis in Columbia in general. I would like to take this time to challenge my current and future teammates to show the generosity that you all have shown us moving forward in continuing to support our tennis programs here at Carolina long after all of our last matches have been played. In closing, from the bottom of my heart, my teammates, the men's team, my coaches, and our support staff, thank you for your ge gracious generosity. We look forward to many championships here at Carolina and go Gamecocks. You have been solicited to help us with the next phase of the uh, grand opening. Please feel free to make your way to the court that's been assigned to you. Also of note, I am in the possession of a hearing aid. That's right, I am in the possession of a hearing aid. If you are missing one, please come find me and I will be happy to relinquish it back to you. Otherwise, Coach Tanner will be conducting an auction here shortly uh, for your uh, missing hearing aid. That being said, Coach Tanner, to end our evening. So in closing, are we getting, uh, we getting organized on the courts? We got the rackets coming out. While they're getting in position and loosening their limbs, I just want to, again, thank everybody for their effort in doing this. You heard from Tiago. You heard from Kendall, our student athletes not only are successful athletically, but also in the classroom. We lead the SEC in academic honor roll. We had 460 student athletes last year, number one in the conference. So we went in a lot of areas. Tiago, you gonna hit a ball over there? Okay. All right, we, got, we, we got everybody on the court. Okay, hold on, you can't hit it yet till I give you the go. I'm gonna give you a three, two, one, go. And you know, I know that you've heard surf up before. This is serve up, right? So here we go, you gotta, you gotta hit an ace. You, you got a good chance of hitting an ace if you get over the net. Ready? Three, two, one, let it rip. 